So let's continue with the program now and recognize the additional scholarship and award winners. I'll be announcing each of the award winners and ask that you do please hold your applause until I have provided the highlights on the background of the award, announced the awardee, and described the award accomplishments. So three parts. The Olin E. Teague Memorial Scholarship. The Olin Teague Scholarship is $4,000 is awarded to an outstanding high school student who intends to pursue high, higher education in science and technology. This year's recipient is Mr. Tobias Hoffman Eggholm. A senior, a senior at River Hill High School in Columbia, Maryland, Tobias is being recognized for research-centered on technology development of a space-based gravitational wave observatory, the Laser Inferometer Space Antenna, LISA. LISA will detect gravitational waves and study a rich array of source, sources, including binary supermassive black hole mergers. Low noise operational amplifiers were modeled and tested as possible electronics in the photo receiver for the LISA mission. Mr. Eggholm plans to study engineering at Columbia University in the fall. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tobias Hoffman Eggholm. <laughs> now, moving on from our scholarship winners, our next group of award winners was nominated and selected by the peer and leaders in each of the respective fields of expertise the NRO Joseph, Dr. Joseph V. Sharik Award. Honoring the first director of the National Reconnaissance Office, the Joseph Sharik Award recognizes individuals who have made outstanding contributions to the National Intelligence Space Program and specifically support of the mission of the NRO. This year's award goes to Dr. Didi Kuo. Director, Director of Geospatial Intelligence Future Study Group at the National Reconnaissance Office, Dr. Kuo was chosen as the NRO lead for, quote, mother of all analysis of alternatives <laughs> with the goal of identifying the next generation electro-optical architecture. He oversaw analysis of millions of architectures to meet best value for the U.S. government and saw his role from solely modeling to including evaluation of utility analysis, risk, and commercial imagery. He oversaw conceptual development of the next generation radar system enhancement, coordinating the concept across executive and legislative branches, and taking the idea from initial concept to contract award in one year. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Didi Kuo. The Noah David Johnson Award. The Noah David Johnson Award recognizes the achievements of young professionals who have shown outstanding innovation in the use of satellite data for operational environmental applications. This year's award is presented to Dr. Rudlowski, Scott Rudlowski. A physical scientist at NOAA and the University of Maryland's Earth System Science Interdisciplinary Center, Dr. Rudlowski is recognized for his innovative contributions to the exploitation of lightning measurements during the preparation for and during the post-launch checkout of the GO-16 geostationary lightning mapper. This includes the development of visualizations and new applications of ground lightning measurements for operational weather forecasters. This paved the way for the tradition of these highly valuable applications from GO-16 into the forecaster operational environment. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Scott Rudlowski. The Space Educator Award. The Space Club Educator Award was established to recognize the importance 
of teachers in motivating and guiding students. This year, we present the award to Mr. Mark Westlake. Ms. Mr. Westlake is being recognized as an outstanding high school teacher. His class was the only high school group to have an experiment in the NASA SOAR program. He was lead teacher in the NASA Microgravity for Educators program and was the Air Force Association National Aerospace Educator of the Year in 2015. He is an MIT Invent Team Master Teacher and served as one of two teachers chosen nationally as a panel member of the Academy of Arts and Science STEM Initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Westlake. The Astronautics Engineer Award. The Astronautics Engineer Award is presented annually in recognition of an aerospace engineer who has made outstanding contributions to the National Space Program in the field of engineering or engineering management. Tonight we honor Dr. Earl Mays, Cassini Project Manager of NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Dr. Mays. Dr. Mays is recognized for his leadership of the NASA JPL Cassini mission and his critical role in guiding the Cassini mission through its tour of the Saturn system. Launched in 1997, the Cassini spacecraft toured the Saturn system since its arrival in 2004 for its up-close study of the planet, its rings, and moons. During its journey, Cassini made numerous dramatic discoveries, including a global ocean and liquid methane seas on Titan. The Cassini mission recently completed its 20-year mission of exploration with a fiery entry into Saturn's atmosphere on September the 15th, 2017. We were all there. The Cassini mission has established itself as one of the world's most successful and productive planetary missions. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Earl Mays. The Press Award. The National Space Club's Press Award recognizes sustained decades-long excellence in journalism that has both supported and underscored the importance of our nation's endeavors in space. This year, we acknowledge senior staff writer of Space News, Mr. Jeff Faust. <laughs> Mr. Faust is recognized for nearly two decades of being at the forefront of reporting about all aspects of space activity, especially policy and budget issues and the rise of commercial space activity. His coverage spans a wide range of important developments that touch everyone interested in space, and his reporting is based on a dedication to knowing his subject and subject matter. Mr. Faust founded SpaceToday.net in 2001 and followed that success by starting the Space Review in 2003. He continues to publish both of these today in association with Space News. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeff Faust. The Nelson P. Jackson Aerospace Award. The Nelson Jackson Award is presented to a government industry team that worked together during the preceding year to make an outstanding contribution to the missile, aircraft, or space field. Please join me in congratulating the ground-based mid-course defense team, GMD. The team is represented on stage by the executive director of the Missile Defense Agency, Mr. John James, and Vice President, Space and Missile Systems for the Boeing Company, Mr. James Chilton. <laughs> the U.S. military and industry team has conducted a missile defense test aimed to protect the nation from a targeted attack. The test, which took place on May the 20th, 
2017 at the Vandenberg Air Force Base was successful after an upgraded long-range interceptor missile directly collided with its target, a mock ICBM. The successful test demonstrates that we have a capable, credible deterrent against a very real threat. And it also marks the nation's first live fire test against a simulated ICBM. In the past, intercepting an ICBM has proven incredibly difficult, akin to hitting one bullet with another, you might say. The successful test has enabled the Missile Defense Agency to aggressively move forward on updating the GMD system, including the redesigned kill vehicle and more ground-based interceptors placed in Alaska. Considering the current threat, this success is critical to the defense of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John James and Mr. Jim Chilton of the GMD system team. The General Bernard Schriever Award. The General Bernard Schriever Award honors the father of Air Force Space and Missile Programs. The award highlights excellence in military space operations and acquisition. Today, we recognize Lieutenant Colonel Laura Robinson, Chief of Space Force Structure Plans for the Space Superiority Division, Directorate of Strategic Plans of the U.S. Air Force Headquarters. Lieutenant Colonel Robinson leads budgetary planning and programming for the space superiority portfolio as well as Air Force's $360 billion long-range plan for space. Also, in 2017, she served as commander for the National Reconnaissance Office Launch Squadron at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Lieutenant Colonel Robinson championed an aggressive effort to reverse a declining a decline across the planning and funding horizon. Her monumental efforts will help transform the resiliency of future space systems and prepare space forces to prevail in conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Laura Robinson. The Goddard Memorial Trophy. The next individual is honored for his distinguished military career and his ongoing efforts dedicated to the national security space enterprise. Our Goddard Memorial Trophy winner, General John Hyten. The vision, the vision and guidance of General Hyten have made an enduring contribution to national security space leadership and the integration of space into all aspects of warfighting capability. The General has been involved in the acquisition, development, requirements, generation of space systems and the operation and application of space power for the past three decades. General Hyten has followed in the footsteps of trailblazing space leaders like General Bernard Schriever and General Tom Mormon, who is in the audience tonight, in his dedication to the active development for the next generation of national space leaders. I am now pleased to present the highest honor this evening to General John Hyten. So that, that was my chief master sergeant, you know, the, my senior enlisted, the sister, senior enlisted leader of all of U.S. Strategic Command. And, and the, the one lesson for everybody in this room is that if sucking up didn't work, people wouldn't do it. <laughs> So, 
I, I, this, this, is, this is overwhelming. It really is overwhelming for me. It's, thank you, Sandy. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody in here. Thank you for the National Space Club. You know, it, uh, I, I just need to recognize a couple people before I get started. Uh, first, uh, Miss Samantha O'Sullivan. Holy cow. Thank, thank you for that speech. Thank you for your words. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for inspiring 2,000 people in this room. And thank you for, well, making each and every one of the 2,000 people in this room feel completely inadequate. <laughs> You know, this, this club does some amazing things. 61 years, this is our 61st dinner. Uh, we inspire the future. We inspire people. This industry is the most amazing industry. And, and the other person I want to recognize tonight is Robert Lightfoot. Uh, So, Rob, you've done a magnificent job at, at NASA as the acting director, and for a, a long, long time before you became the acting administrator. Uh, thank you for everything that you do, because I tell you what, in this country, if you think about space, dreams begin with NASA, and that's, that's where my dreams began, because I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama, Roll Tide. <laughs> and, and I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama in the 1960s. And I'm, if you want to know my story, my story is simply, I'm about the luckiest person in the world. Because I'm, I'm lucky to have grown up in Huntsville with a wonderful family uh, who loved me and cared about math and science, and they pushed me to study math and science. I'm lucky to have grown up with teachers, and when you had me close my eyes, it was Mrs. Rebecca Hill. Um, she scared the heck out of me, but... <laughs> She, she taught me like, like nobody ever taught me before. I'm, I'm lucky enough to meet and marry my wife, Laura, the finest person I've ever met, who's sitting right out here. And I'm lucky enough to have two incredible kids that uh, are newly engaged just in the last few months, which is pretty awesome. I can't wait to see what their next chapter is going to bring. But back to Alabama, I was lucky enough to grow up in Huntsville, Alabama, and my dad worked on the Saturn V. And I, you bet. And I, and I got to see the F1 engine test up close, and I got to feel the power of those engines. And I got to watch my dad build the infrastructure at the Cape two summers as we went down. And I, I got to watch on my great-grandfather's black and white television, Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. And I got to meet Werner von Braun when I was in fifth grade. Werner von Braun, who was the first recipient of the Goddard Trophy in 1958. That's, that's overwhelming when you think about it. Because I tell you, I can't help but think when, when people look at the list of the Goddard Trophy winner in the coming years and they look down that list and they see all those names, they're going to see one name in 2018 that just doesn't belong. <laughs> yep, that would be mine. You know, when I grew up, I wanted to be an astronaut. I really did. Uh, but I was legally blind. And at the time, NASA did not take blind people to be astronauts. <laughs> so naturally, I joined the Air Force, where blind people... <laughs> but for me, it was just a way to pay for college. And I was going to do my four years and get out and go be an engineer in the space business like my dad. But I fell in love with the Air Force. 
And I had friends and bosses and mentors that pushed me and taught me the business. They helped us to bring space capabilities to bear on our nation's most important mission, and that's our defense. And we helped change warfare forever, and the world will never go back. Every mission that our military does is critically dependent on space. Every single mission, from humanitarian operations to full combat operations. And I was lucky enough to be part of that from the very beginning. So I wish I had time to thank all my heroes, all my bosses, all my friends, but I really only have time to thank one in particular. And if you've served in the space business with me in our Air Force, then you know who our biggest hero was. He was the leader that we all wish we could be. He taught us how to do the work of space in the military. He taught us how to treat space like a warfighting domain. And he was unlike any other during our time. And he was the winner of the Goddard Trophy in 1995. That's General Thomas S. Mormon, Jr. General Mormon led the way. He's seated right over here next to the prettiest girl in the room. That's my wife, Laura. <laughs> General Mormon, stand up again so everybody can see you in a... In a in, in, What everybody in the room needs to know is General Mormon was the best of all of us. He's the one that, that led the way. Uh, General Mormon, there's no doubt that your name belongs on, on this trophy. But I'd like to think that my name is here to represent all the military space professionals, past, present, and future, who are simply trying to carry on your legacy. So the National Space Club, each and every one of you, thank you very much. Thank you, General Highton. We're just thrilled to have you here tonight. Having had the opportunity to associate with the awardees and scholarship winners, I couldn't resist taking my own journey back in time, reflecting on various inspirations in my pathway into engineering and science. All of my hopes and dreams for a career in space exploration began when I met Dr. Werner von Braun as an 11-year-old Girl Scout at Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama. I also grew up near Huntsville, Alabama, and I'm an Alabama graduate as well. And that, we did not coordinate this, did we? <laughs> Interesting. Dr. Von Braun showed us, showed my Girl Scout troop, a model, a rocket model, and told us that we're going to the moon someday. I mean, every 11-year-old deserves a vision of future possibilities. Just amazing to hear your story, Samantha, and also General Hyten, because I, too, was so inspired by just meeting this man that was bigger than, than anything we had ever seen. I mean, I had my dad worked at Redstone Arsenal as well, and you walk into his, he gives us time. I mean, he... He gives Girl Scouts time just to talk to us about going to the moon. The importance of parents, educators, academic and career mentors and colleagues in, sh in shaping every life tonight here, including mine, can't be overstated. I'm so touched to be a part of an organization such as the National Space Club and Foundation that both recognizes today's achievements and also gives to the next generation. Before we wrap up the formal part of the evening, permit me the opportunity to thank the people who made tonight and the entire year a success for the Space Club. Events like this do not come together without a tremendous amount of work. 
First, an enormous thank you to my fellow Space Club members for their time, dedication, and enthusiasm this year, starting with our Goddard dinner chairperson, Ann Zakowski. <laughs> and board members, Bill Beckman, John Larrabee, Susan Nelson, Mike Pritchard, J.R. Reardon, Gary Teslut, and, Carly, and Carla Zipiri. Please give them a hand. I'd also like to recognize Lockheed Martin for designing and printing tonight's beautiful program, and I want to give a special thanks to Washington Hilton staff, including Karen Fedeskis and executive chef Andre Cote for a wonderful dinner. <laughs> Further credit goes to the executive director, Annette Summers, Sheila Crowley, and the rest of the dedicated and professional team at Grafrida Associates. This space club is very fortunate to have them working with us. And on a per more personal note, thank you to Dave Thompson, Blake Larson, Ed Fortunato, Frank Culbertson, Charlie Precourt, and the other senior leaders at Orbital ATK who allowed me the time to support this great endeavor. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to, to thank my husband, Guy, and our children who have all joined us tonight. So I have a table of 10 here supporting me. They are my pride and joy. The night is still young, and we invite you to enjoy the hospitality suites by our corporate members. And as you leave, I hope you will take a moment to remind yourself why you do what you do. Your work supports science, exploration, the youth, and especially the many servicemen and women who defend this great country. Thank you and good night.